Well, here we go. In the white is Wallace and Gonsalves. In the blue, Talis and Suarez. And immediately a very quick start, but it takes them out of bounds and therefore they will be reset in a neutral standing position. Again, double guard Paul. This time it's Tallison who comes up aggressively. Good use of the pant grip there. Controlling the near side leg, but interestingly, the way that he wrapped over his opponent's other leg, around his opponent's other leg, has put him into this really compromised position. And he actually has a leg weave, he has his right knee behind the thigh and on the mat over the other leg. There you go, it's a perfect view of it right there. That pant grip probably slow him down a little bit. Gonzalez may not be able to hold on to it too long. Nice use of the windshield wiper motion to free his leg. Talisons into almost a three-quarter mount. Good elevation there from Gonzalez in recovering position. Getting back into the relative safety of the open guard. Talisons Suarez circling with that cross grip of the pants. And again, dives the knee through, leg weave position. He wants to smash that top leg, keep the weight on it, keep it down, make it an ineffective frame, clear that bottom leg out of the way. And he has so many options here. I mean, you can backstep over the top of it. You can, you can just knee cut over the top of the top leg. You can go directly into the mount. And he's working his way up, controlling the upper body. There you go. Goes for a waist lock. And Gonzalez feels that. He tries to build the base, get up and turn away. A strong start for Talis and Suarez so far. I mean, we're just over two minutes in. He's got two advantages on the board. And he's come really close to passing the guard twice now. But Gonzalez has managed to stave off those attempts has managed to recover guard both times. And now we see him working this open guard, lasso on one side, now lasso on both sides. Talisson Suarez representing Art of Jiu-Jitsu. He's got it on his gi. It's on the scoreboard. He's got Gi Mendez in his corner. Still lives in Australia, but has elected to do his camps for major tournaments at AOJ in California. Yeah, at the time, that was kind of a surprising development to see Talisson do that, but it clearly has... Rewarded him with some benefits here. Oh, yeah. Guimen is a, a master, not just technical uh, uh, of the aspects of jiu-jitsu, but also of the tactics. Oh, just when it comes to strategy, <laughs> it's not about what happens on the mat. I mean, they have the strategy, everything lined up, you know, everything leading into the match. Everything's just dialed in for success. But look at this. Coming out the back door is Talisson Suarez. Up onto the top now, back into a passing position. That's going to be two. Yeah, if you want to look at the playbook for creating a successful jiu-jitsu athlete, then the AOJ really has uh, done so much to write that. But Talisson Suarez, you know, let's take anything away from his former teams or the people who have contributed to his success. He did arrive at AOJ as a black belt and had been just absolutely killing it on the competition scene ever since a juvenile blue belt coming up through the ranks. We watched him every step of the way and it's a pleasure to see him here competing at the European tournament, at the European Championships as a black belt. 
And this is where he first came on our radar as a yeah. blue belt, as a juvenile blue belt. He came on to our radar. You're making me feel my age, Hal. He's a special talent for sure. Again, we see something that AOJ has made standard in all their athletes. The starting or uh, the beginnings of this shin trap passing where we'll try and force this leg across to uh, a modified leg drag essentially but it starts a little bit more uh, longer range you might say than some leg drags. This is lapel at play here and you can see the left side of Talison Suarez's body is wrapped around the shin of uh, Gonsalves. Couldn't quite see if uh, he was holding that under his own leg. I don't think he was. It was just uh, stuck. It was definitely very taut. Wow, and Gonsalves does not like that pant grip because Talison Suarez has used it now twice to get very close to passing his guard. That time he was kicking it off. The speed of these transitions is, is incredible, really. Ellison doing his best to keep up, but Talison pouring on the pressure here. Yeah, he really is. And a little bit like when we were watching uh, Diego Pato in the weight division matches and the light featherweight division matches earlier, mixing up the long-range distance passing that you so associate with the AOJ with this close-range classic pressure passing that really was a, a, a trademark of Murillo Santana and all of the Unity athletes that came through his gym. Of course, Talatan Suarez spent a long time training with Unity and that crew. And... Uh, I love to see that combination of styles. It's a very interesting synthesis, and they complement each other so well. Yeah, and they are also a great method of shutting down the Baron Bolo inversion game, or the pressure passing sequences, which is a staple of many of the lighter weight athletes. Hansen Suarez has now what looks to be basically double underhooks. And he's knee cutting through, and there it is. That Powerful lock in the back of the collar from the underhook prevents any kind of turn away from Wellison Gonsalves. And yeah, Talison Suarez suddenly has seven points on the scoreboard. And he's in a great position here. Beautiful use of the upper body control to step over the guard once again. Drops into the side control, but unusual side control because he's basically, I think he had double underhooks. No, he's gone underhook cross face again. There you go. Passing the lapel around through the armpit, giving some extra juice to that uh, cross face. Oh, and he's pulling out his own collar here. Now this is the very beginning of a very sneaky choke attack. He's going to pass it inside and underneath the forearm and around the neck to his right hand, which right now is controlling the lapel, uh, the jacket of Gonzalez, but he'll switch the grips. He'll pass the, the very tail of his own lapel through to his right hand. There it is. It's so coming through, coming through, using his teeth to even grip it. And Gonzalez knows it's coming, but it's very, very difficult to stop it. And he might be switching to a head and arm choke here. Gonzalez looks to uh, address the lapel. I no, mean, he, he has both. He's coming around top. Yeah, he, he's he got has options. Both. Yeah, he, he has his pick here. And the dilemma is in action. Guy Mendes keeping a close eye on things here. Somebody actually from AOJ who does this choke very, very well is Jonathan Alves. Mm. He's used this choke uh, a lot. And there it is. He's passed the lapel through. To his right hand, he's going to circle around in a clockwork motion all the way to the other side. And it should just there be a matter is. of time. There it is. Gets the finish. Beautiful clinical choke using the tail end of the gi. Talison Suarez gets it done here at the European Championships with a submission in the final and claims the gold medal. There's a little... There you have it. Our referee makes it official. Talison Soros is once again a European championship, or champion, rather. 